All right, good evening. I'd like to call this meeting of the Lakeville Planning Board to order. It is Thursday, December 14th at 7 p.m. We are meeting at the Lakeville Police Station uh, meeting room at 323 Bedford Street, Lakeville. Uh, for the record, is anybody else recording this meeting? Being that that being a no, uh, Lake Kim is recording this meeting and I'd like to get on to our first item of, on the agenda, which is a continued public hearing for 156 County Street. Uh, Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, but the applicant has requested a continuance. Yes, they have. Uh, that said, I'd like to make a motion to continue the 156 County Street public hearing for site plan review until January 11th at 7 p.m. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is an A&R plan for our Montgomery Street, uh, which is Alpha Survey Group, James Peterson. If, I'd like you to, if you could come up to one of these chairs here with the microphones, just sure. state your name and address. Jeff Tamala, 185 Herring Pond Road, Plymouth, Mass. So Jeff, tonight we have a A&R plan in front of us that shows you're creating a parcel uh, coming off Hill Street. Correct. Uh, I talked to zoning enforcement. He seemed to think there was no issue with this. Mark, do you have any comments on this? No. Um, he's basically acquiring a strip of land to be combined with the rest of his property in the back. So um, it's not increasing any nonconformity. It's actually still nonconforming, but it's less so. Uh, and I honestly, I, I have to say, I didn't go fine tooth comb over the rest of the plan as far as meeting the planning board rules and regulations. Did anybody else? So it is supposed to say um, not a buildable parcel. It does say it in the notes. Um, I don't know if it should say it under this as well, where it says the signatures of the planning board. I think if it says it in the notes, I think that would listed be. on the yeah. on the parcel itself too. Yeah. Oh, that does say it right in the middle there, Marcel. Parcel two, Michelle, down on uh, the left hand lot. Right there too. Parcel okay. two. Yeah. yeah. So as long as it says that, I think, I think we're covered. Okay. Any other members have any comments? No, All right, I make a motion that the planning board endorse this A and R plan. Second. So, have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Good to go. Good to go. Good to go. I believe you'll have to do some filing at the registry of deeds, but right. I, that, yeah, so I have to get a, we'll a have, mylar. We have to have the planning board sign the mylar. I, I don't. That, that's what I bring to my attorney. Yeah. Do you have the mylar? You have it. Oh. Okay. So when Kathy comes, if you well, want to just stick around, if you want to wait, oh yeah, and she should be here, and you should be signing them after the meeting if you want to. Yeah, leave, I can leave wait. with it tonight. I'm here, so I'm not going all the way back to Plymouth. My, <laughs> my attorney's in Plymouth, so it, it works for me. Mm. Very good. Yeah, super. It's a little different than the town meetings I've been to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like this one. <laughs> Sometimes we have more attendance. It's yeah. just uh, not a, a lot of huge stuff going on in tonight's meeting. Yeah. Uh, next item on the agenda is Pauline's Paths. Path, excuse me. Discuss covenant and lot release. Uh, so, Mark, I didn't see any paperwork in our packet, we, but this was that uh, we, yeah, parcel. We, uh, it's yeah, subdivision up off of Holland Road. Yes. And so, can you give us an update on where Bill Logan's at? Uh, he had uh, requested um, some lot releases, um, but well, so I asked for formal request for lot releases and we didn't receive it. I called him about it. Um, so we'll probably put this on the next agenda to be approved and signed. So I just don't think he got right to it. So. All right. So we're still going to need from him a formal request for yes. a lot release. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's about this. I usually like to, to require that they submit a written request. Yeah, fill away. 
to Edwin Pauling's path. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, we Apologies. have one for the next item. Um, just so I know, what's he requesting um, for releases? I think that was a five lot subdivision. Or yeah, I think lot? he's just requesting, I believe, two lots. So, and I, I'm not even sure the covenant was put in place at that. I think that's what the issue was, is that there was no covenant put in place, so. Yeah, and I think some of that transpired because of during COVID, we're doing a lot of remote stuff and right. Kathy wasn't in the office a lot. So I think some of those things slipped through the cracks. Mm -hmm. Right, so, so. so I think we talked about it and he was gonna talk to his attorney. Um, so I think it's probably still in the works, so. All right, so uh, no vote required on this. No. Nope. We'll just request Kathy to put that on the also January 11th agenda. Mm -hmm. Next item on the agenda, Bella's Way lot release, which we actually have a form. I believe they did come in front of us about a year ago. And same thing, I just don't think that the release got signed and filed. That's correct. Uh, per the state, uh, this states that the bond has been posted by the applicant that's being held by the town currently. Uh, it is a private road. Uh, so that's a little out of the normal for what we would have asked for if it was gonna be in a town accepted road. Uh, but anyway, uh, I make a motion that the planning board sign the lot release uh, for, it's the final lot really, lots one, two, and three will be released at this point yes. and sign this. Yeah, I'm Second. surprised it didn't come up because there is a covenant when during the previous two closings, I'm sure it should have been picked up by their attorney should have yes. done that. So um, I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, Kathy, welcome. Thank you. This lot release for uh, Bella Way. Yes. I don't see any dates on it. Is that something we can sign one here tonight for you? Uh, yeah, you can sign it and then I'll take it to the clerk tomorrow so she can notarize it. And no dates required because I don't see it. A date down below with the signatures it'll be good the way it is uh she'll we'll probably date it for tomorrow her stamp will date it yeah okay and got a little backup page just a little yeah that's the part that she she will notarize should those be labeled one of one and two of one or... yes they should actually okay you'll take care of that yep All right, so next item on the agenda is a review of the Zoning Board Appeals petitions. And so I'm gonna address the first one, then I'm gonna recuse myself on the second one. Uh, the first one is just a lot set back for a, a private residence, 311 Pond Lane. Uh, if there's uh, no issue with the rest of the members, I'd like to make a motion to no, make no comment to the ZBA on that one. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, that said, Michelle, you're going to take over on this. I'm just going to step into the audience because I'm in a butter of <laughs> the town property there. So oh. the second zoning board of appeals petition that we have is the town of Lakeville for two and 28 precinct street. Um, it looks like they're uh, proposing a gazebo and um, According to the letter that we received, they found that there is some water lines below the gazebo, so they're looking to change it, and it's within the setback. So typically we, as a planning board, we make no comment to ZBA on things like this and let them handle it because that's what they do. So I would uh, move that we make uh, no comment, recommendation to, of no comment to ZBA. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All Uh, next item on the agenda is housing production plan discuss and possible vote on state's edits. Uh, I'm going to 
defer to both Nora and Mark on this one as to where this is, because I know Nora, you had mentioned to me that you had some conversation with Taylor, and we don't have any of the, if there are updates on the edits in our packet. Yeah, I had a couple conversations with Taylor. The first one was that um, they had asked it to be taken off because they didn't have any expertise in whether you could build on a landfill. Uh, I supplied her with some examples where in Massachusetts, towns have built on landfills, uh, along with a couple uh, bylaws uh, for the state of Massachusetts. Uh, they had reached out to EOHLC uh, to get their feedback and as of this morning they hadn't received it and I instructed her last week that the landfill was to be placed back on the housing plan so that's where I stand Mark um, I had a conversation with Taylor and Rob as well and basically they're um, going to wait until they hear back from the OHLC so um, the, the biggest issue related to the landfill is that it is <clears throat> um, a site for 40B, which is an affordable housing development, which um, as opposed to a market rate housing development where they can charge whatever they want, they can make whatever they want, so they can absorb the added cost. If the market is strong and you build the right units and the right communities to build, be able to build on a landfill. And so, um, you know, their opinion is you really need to wait to hear from the state on whether they feel that those added costs make it um, unreasonable to use site the uh, uh, use the landfill as one of the sites. So, um, so that's that's kind of. Yeah, but we're going on so. a month where they haven't gotten any response. What makes us think that they're going to get a response now? I mean, aren't we under a timeline on this? Yes. It's overdue. Yeah. And, um, and again, I, I asked for the landfill to be put back in. So my question is, who does this HPP go to at the state level? Is it that same entity or someone else? What do you mean same entity? Is So when we submit the housing production plan, is it going to that same E? Yes. Okay, yes. so why wouldn't we just submit it and say, this is our housing production plan and wait for comments back. Well, Instead that was my of, comment to Taylor. So that's what, I think we should mm. move forward with this. We need to get it in place. Um, even if we have to make some adjustments after the state reviews it, um, I would like to mo motion to submit this housing production plan to the state as soon as possible. Second. As drafted. As drafted. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. So I'd like to just know when that can be done. I know there's a few steps and I I'm know. I'm gonna call Taylor again tomorrow. So. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is discuss OSRD. Uh, Michelle, you and I had talked about that uh, at some point. Um, I think you had mentioned that you'd like to get open space, mm -hmm. their comments on that, so. Open space and Board of Health. So I think those would be the first two I'd like to reach out to. Uh, do you want to reach out and then get back to the board? Uh, uh, yeah. That said, I don't want to do five member board meeting with a three member board if we don't have to. Okay. So I guess I'm going to ask the remainder of both the planning board, would everybody be all right if I and Michelle met with open space committee, got their comments, got their feedback at one of their meetings. And then we brought that back as part of amending the open space residential development mm -hmm. bylaw. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine with yeah, that. Fine. Okay. okay. Uh, so I'll reach out to, to to just join as an agenda item on their next meeting. Yes. Okay. Should I do the same with Board of Health, or how would? Because that's only three members. Should we? Would you want to do the same? Should we invite them to one of ours? I think they meet on Wednesdays. We definitely should reach out, I guess, just strategically, do you want to get through open space and get comments from somebody mm -hmm. and maybe at the same time, reach out to the Board of Health, then say in the future, maybe in on your second meeting in January, could we 
tentatively and see if we get to open space first. So we're not doing a bunch at once and then we, we're possibly getting conflicting comments. I'd rather at least get comments from one and then say, this is what they said, this is what we're bringing to you now and just one at a time go through and get comments. Okay. Not to, not to drag the process out, but I, I think that mm -hmm. I feel like it could be a counterproductive. Now we have to go back to open space because they said that. Right. So, all right. So we'll look for. Oh, and one other question. So, Nora, I think you had wanted. So we, I talked about um, how the other draft had some uh, exclusions of prohibited items that cannot happen in open space. I didn't. I know you said you wanted to have a chance to look at it. Um, you thought maybe we should include that. So that would be just something, you know, obviously we said we didn't want to have a final draft when we're going through all these boards and, right. and other committees. So maybe. Yeah, I kind of want to wait for the feedback. Okay, so we'll wait. Yeah. Okay. All right. Because this is not so very to see to get that done right now until we have the feedback from the other boards, right? Okay. Many other committees. No, I mean, the only other beneficial thing would be we'd go and we'd, we could be going to them with our comments in addition to say this is also something we've talked about to add to it and maybe that would be beneficial for them maybe what that I, would spark comments back from them related to that topic what i could do is i could put it in like another font color and just say we we're considering adding something yeah. like this mm -hmm. i'm fine right. with that yeah I'm okay. Fine with that. Uh, okay okay all right so michelle uh update the board as to so everybody knows and okay yeah, I'll send it. Um, I'll copy everybody when I send the, the emails then. Planning board and budget cycle. Uh, oh, Michelle, I think you had said we'd like to get back into speaking to the budget with the select board. Correct. So this is something really we're just requesting now maybe to have a letter sent to the select board to. Yes. So my thought was. Um, because, you know, unfortunately, this board's been excluded um, since it became the planning department budget rather than the planning board budget. And um, my, my thought was that if everyone's in agreement, that um, we should request to become part of that discussion. Um, I would like to send a letter to the select board as well as the FinCom chair, potentially. Um, just letting them know that planning board is interested in joining the budget discussions for mm -hmm. this upcoming fiscal 25. I think it makes sense. Okay. So is that another email you want me to send off and copy everyone on? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. That All right. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is discuss priority protection and priority development parcels. Uh, Mark, I know you had worked on this a bit mm -hmm. and uh, I haven't seen anything in the packet. Is there any update on this and where it might go? No. So basically <clears throat> the, uh, the next step would be that uh, when after the new year, SERPID will reach out to the communities that they're working on to begin to meet with the boards in the communities. So here and initially they were um, really planning to meet with the planning board and, and the select board um, on, on these uh, uh, priority development area. There's no statutory requirement. These are, these plans were <clears throat> funded through the South Coast Rail program. So there's no statutory requirement. Um, so generally that's the boards they usually go through, so. Oh, so yeah, no, I thought that it was something that had to be put in place by January, sometime in January, and that there's funding tied to designating these areas. No. No? No. They, the funding is through South Coast Rail, through SERPED to do the plans for the communities that are along the South Coast Rail area. And, um, you know, these, these plans have no... Um, Again, it's it's really a, a planning document for the communities to use internally. Um, it's uh, to assist in, you know, assuming there's growth associated with the South Coast Rail 
going through all these communities to, to kind of help them uh, manage and identify areas where you may want growth or where you don't want growth. So, um, Is there any grant money tied to it once you have the plan in place no, or anything like that? No, because it's unique to the South Coast Rail community. So it was kind of a way of, um, uh, because the South Coast Rail wasn't universally um, accepted, you know, by every community being super excited about the rail coming through as a way of, I believe, I wasn't part of the initial discussions, but, you know, it was, I believe it was a way of, of trying to help the communities with some some funding and some planning. I thought you just said there isn't funding. So what well, is the, well, what's no, the funding not, for them? No. Well, to fund these plans. Okay. Funding to fund the plans so that you can help the communities plan for growth. But so it's also priority protection in development, right? Yes. Yeah. So then just say the town goes through and gets this done. Mm -hmm. What is the benefit and or protection for the town to have the plan in place for a priority protection parcel or a priority development parcel? There What's is different no, than not doing There it? is no statutory, um, you know, uh, it, the, there's nothing that the plan does that gives you any sort of protection either way. It's, it's meant to help the communities guide their planning and their growth. So if you identify an area that's a priority protection area and there's a parcel, let's say, you want to acquire and you apply for a grant to the Commonwealth to, to have some of the costs paid, like a land grant, in writing your application, it helps to be able to say, this is in a priority protection area that was identified through the, this process. It doesn't necessarily give you, um, you know, a So if I'm hearing you correctly, this is a mini master plan for mm -hmm. just that. Exactly, that's all it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Minutes for October 26, 2023. I looked through, they looked pretty good, but I didn't check for spelling errors or anything like that. Did anybody else get a chance to look through those? I read them, they seemed good to me. Yeah. Make a motion to approve the planning board minutes for Thursday, October 26, 2023. Second. As drafted. Have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries, minutes are approved. Uh, we added something in our packet for meeting dates and uh, deadline for submittal dates for the coming year, 2024. Did everybody get a chance to review those? Um, and trusting Kathy that these are all second and fourth Thursday of the month. Correct. And you did the backwards math for yes. the submittals. Yep. Everybody good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I uh, make a motion to approve the planning board meeting schedule and deadlines for submittal. Second. second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any correspondence, Mark? Um, a bunch of notices from other communities. Most are rather small lot divisions, variances, etc. with the exception of two. Um, well, one marijuana retailer, again, in Taunton, and, um, and the proposed amendment to Taunton's ordinance to allow um, those establishments in another zoning district as well. So I just thought that was interesting. Those keep coming forward, um, but everything else is pretty minor. No, I don't think right now anyone's proposing significant developments right now. And okay. um, the only other correspondence, as I mentioned to you, is um, you may be getting a zoning petition article um, for, and I don't know in what form, but um, um, to allow a higher lot coverage on lots under 10,000 square feet. So a resident of um, one of the small communities um, I don't know, uh, I think he lives in Churchill Shores. Um, 
has a small lot and would like to have a bigger garage than what the zoning board approved because of the lot coverage. So now he's trying to um, change, change the rules this. To fit his yes, wants. exactly. Sorry. So I had uh, explained to him that the planning board has in the past required um, anything site specific to be submitted by petition. So. Um, yeah, you had talked to me about that. And I had talked to that, you so. about that, but I thought the rest of the board kind of ought to know that yep. he came in today and um, appeared to be trying to get a petition. Yes. Okay, good. Together. Uh, so. and just so everybody in the planning board knows, uh, currently our uh, lot coverage maximum requirement or maximum allowance on residential lots is 25%. So he's looking to go up to 50% because he doesn't have enough land. So. I didn't feel like we wanted to do that because those communities, those smaller lot communities are mostly uh, near the ponds. Uh, yeah. So there's already recharge, uh, runoff issues, conservation would have a problem if we did that increase because they don't like to see impervious, more impervious around those areas, it makes it harder for the water to recharge back into the groundwater when you have rain and runoff. So Would I don't think it would be well issue? received. Hmm? Board of Health might have an issue as well. Right. Yeah. So that's that's my reasoning for mm. not backing it as a planning board right. initiative. Mm. And he, if the gentleman wants to come in and do a citizen petition, he's welcome to. But mm. I, we'll see how it goes. Okay. Um, that said, our next meeting. I have a question just under our correspondence because we actually got an email from Mark with advice from town council in regards to an A and R from Derek Maxey. And I didn't see it on yeah. the agenda. So what oh, yeah. is the purpose behind that? So um, Derek submitted a plan for me to look at. Um, and um, <clears throat> the plan, so he has two lots at the end of Railroad Ave, which basically are contain the 18th fairway of the uh, Lakeville Country Club. Um, <laughs> he wanted to uh, modify those lots to wrap around the end of uh, Reservoir Ave, where it ends, and then include some land on the other side of Reservoir Ave behind the houses there so that the lot would uh, have a piece out front and a skinny piece wrapping around to some land behind. Um, and then he would access those from, I believe it's called Hardcore Dev. Um, yeah. Okay. So there's um, some. That's sort of the loophole. He has access possibly from two points. Yeah. Well, but the, the thing is, is that there's a variety of case law, which, and there's one particular case where it talks about, well, there's a variety of case law on illusory access. In other words, the statute requires that not only you have frontage along a road of suitable grades, widths, and you know, construction to handle the added lots, but you also have um, access across the frontage to the buildable portion of the lot. So although you may be able to gain access and use access from another location, you have to have feasible access through your frontage to the buildable portion of the lot. So let's say there's a little brook and you need to get a wetlands permit to cross the brook. As long as it's under 5,000 square feet, there's a likelihood you're going to get that permit. So you could divide lots like that. But if in the case of super skinny lots that you're not going to be able to access through to the buildable portion, there's case law that says that that's not okay, even if you get a driveway on the backside somewhere. So there's a, so, um, so I discussed that with him. He understood the case. He's, um, look, they're looking to try and figure out how to modify it so he can still get that um, approved in some form. And um, so they're doing that work and he hopes to have a plan after the first of the year to submit. Um, I would recommend that you, um, once that's submitted, you try to call Amy and have her uh, scheduled to be at that, that meeting. 
Yeah, and get her to re get the plan to her before that to review yes. as well. I think that. my concern, though, is that we're using town council for a plan that wasn't completely submitted. Um, so why was he not advised to proceed with his own town council or town <laughs> with his own advice from council? as opposed to going through the town. If he didn't submit it. Like that's, I'm just, it just seems backwards. You know, was he looking for legal advice that the town gave out for free? Should no. this be billed back to him? No, I believe I basically wanted confirmation from Amy that my interpretation of those cases are correct. And so, um, Okay. And so I thought the board should know. So I forwarded it to the, you know, the board. And I did see her response, which was, I think it's a, yeah, I mean, very, it's, it's, it's a quick, it was complex to say yeah. the least. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that actually is similar to your parcel in that back property. That's something right. similar. Uh, any other business to come before the planning board tonight properly? Nothing, Jack? Thank you. I, I feel like it went really quick through this. Is there anything I missed? <laughs> <laughs> well, are, are you going to these meetings? I ran an well, efficient like, meeting. Well, Mark, is he going to make the announcement that he's... This Hello, is, Mark. Mark, this is your oh. last meeting with us. Jeez. Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, Thanks, Mark. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Yeah, it is, that said, <laughs> we don't think, and we've continued stuff till January because we're not hopefully going to have a uh, December 28th meeting. Mm -hmm. So right. that puts Mark's last day, the 5th, be before our next meeting. So this will be his last meeting. So. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's been fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Hey, look, we all second it. Yeah. I have a motion in several seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Meeting is adjourned.